friends welcome to my channel my name is wolo i want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel the weather is cold it is snowing if i show you what the wind what it is like outside you will be surprised this is snowing it is cold we are in manitoba we have no choice we have to embrace the weather i want to also apologize to anybody who i have not responded to your emails or i have not done what you asked me to do that's because i have been kind of been under the weather um for some days now when the weather changes like that uh, i try to adjust and adapt and all that but sometimes you just you know find yourself falling sick and feeling kind of irritated and all that so please forgive me i'll ask attend to your emails and please bear with me be patient and all that so thank you today's video is about thunder bay and um thunder bay is in ontario the population of Thunder Bay is about 106,900 as at 2016. Um, they have not done an update on the population on the Statistics Canada website. So I got that information from Statistics Canada. Then the second thing you need to know about Thunder Bay is that uh, it's in Ontario, but it's in the northern part of Ontario. Now, if you want to drive from Toronto to Thunder Bay, it will take you about 16 hours. Whereas if you drive from Winnipeg to Thunder Bay, it is eight hours. And then from Thunder Bay to Minnesota, Minnesota is in the U.S., is about six hours. So you can see the difference. So somebody like me who is living in Manitoba, I can get to Thunder Bay faster than somebody who is living in Tor Toronto, Ontario. So Thunder Bay is closer to Manitoba than Toronto in Ontario. So those are the things you should know. Now, Thunder Bay has been chosen as, as one of the communities that will be participating in the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot. And I have talked so much about the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot. That's because it's a pilot that will be starting soon. Thunder Bay is among the five communities that is supposed to start this November. I think they are trying to put their things in place, put their websites, put the employers, the job postings in place and all that. So they have not started yet. And I'm going to show you on their website what to do, what to go, and especially the occupations that they will be looking for. Um, unfortunately, if you are an accountant or a human resources person, your occupation does not fall among the occupations they are looking for in Thunder Bay. There are several occupations they are looking for, but there are quite some other occupations that a lot of people are already into that they are not looking for in Thunder Bay. So, I will show you briefly, um, shortly on the website, what to do, where to go to find information about the occupations that um, employers will be posting jobs for. And luckily, the healthcare industry is also a big um, sector in Thunder Bay. So they are looking for registered nurses. They are looking for dentists. They are looking for early childhood educators and um, they are looking for i think physiotherapists or whatever but i'll show you on the website where the information is and then um, i encourage you to keep checking that website because as from december 1 2019 they will start posting job opportunities and you also need to apply now there's one thing i need to mention here i did a video on canadian resume and a lot of people keep sending me emails about canadian resume please take your time to search through all the videos I have done. There are vital informations there. You will see information about the Canadian resume. You have to draft your resume, the Canadian standard, for you to be able to apply to jobs, for them to look at your resume. And I also mentioned in the last video that it takes a recruiter 31 seconds to look at your resume. And if they don't find what they're looking for, they will toss it aside. So it will do you a whole lot of good if you search those videos go back to the video on Canadian resume and watch it and draft a resume, the Canadian standard, in readiness to apply for jobs in any of these rural communities. So um, I'll try as much as possible to bring the information for you, but the bulk of the work, you need to do it yourself in terms of you getting your IELTS ready, getting your credentials evaluated, and also getting your proof of funds ready. Um, those are the things I want you to be prepared for if you don't have those things ready it will be a waste of time sending me an email on a rural and northern immigration pilot when you have not even evaluated your credentials or even written the ielts exam 
and um, yeah so I'll show you on the website shortly and I hope you take advantage of it and keep your fingers crossed mark the date December 1 they will start posting job opportunities to get information about Thunder Bay you Go to this website www.gotothunderbay.ca When you scroll down, you will find information that you need about the pilot. So we start with the first um, item there which is about the pilot. Once you click on it, it tells you what the pilot is about. It is designed to spread the benefits of immigration to smaller communities by creating a path to permanent residents for skilled foreign workers who want to work and live in one of the participating communities so it is not um, a, a pilot where you would want to use it to gain a permanent resident status and then disappear into a bigger city like Toronto you are obliged to live in the community and work with an employer in the community that's what the pilot is about if you click on the second step which is about the process you will find information about the process and details of who can apply once you click on this it will take you to the government of canada website uh, for and gives you more information about who can apply the next one is the eligibility criteria now the eligibility criteria is that you must get a recommendation from a designated community economic development organization you must have a qualifying work experience or have graduated from a publicly funded post-secondary institution now for those who are schooling in canada and who have graduated from any of the institutions like that are in that are found in those communities they are also eligible to apply under this pilot the third requirement is having a qualifying job offer so um that is what the pilot is about it means you have to search for a job and get a qualifying job offer before you can get a recommendation the next one is meaning meeting the minimum language requirements so i like i've been mentioned in all of my videos you just have to write the ielts exam or the cell pip exam or the tef or the tcf there is no way you can avoid um wanting to immigrate to canada without writing your ielts exam or evaluating your credential the next one is the educational requirements which i just talked about now you just have to evaluate your credential and then the next criteria is you must prove that you have enough money to support yourself proving that you have enough money to support yourself is the proof of funds you need to have the proof of funds in your account the next criteria is you must intend to live in the community so intending to live in the community is that you have to demonstrate your intention of staying in the community and like i mentioned before it's not a pilot where you think you can just you know use to gain access to canada and then disappear into another community you must show intention of wanting to live in the community the next um requirement or information is um the recommendation from a designated community which is here and which i have been mentioning before or which i have listed before you must have an intention to live in the community you must have a job offer from the community and your work experience and skill sets must be in the community and if you have ties to the community like if you have a sibling or a cousin or a friend i don't think they've mentioned a friend here but they are saying if you have ties to the community then you are likely to get a recommendation from the community work experience is the next information there so you at least have one year of continuous work experience in the past three years and please read this information here so that you know what is required for work experience volunteering or unpaid internships don't count as work experience self-employment also does not count as work experience so if you're self-employed please the rural and northern immigration pilot is not for you you will have to look for another program that suits your um, needs the next requirement is the job offer you must get a full-time job offer from the community which is non-seasonal the next information is on the skill level so you have skill level zero skill level a skill level b c and d your occupation must either be in any of the occupations listed 
in the skill level. This one is for international students, basically for international students who are already schooling in the community. The information is from there for them. I won't be clicking on it. The language requirement, I've mentioned it before, you must write IELTS and your language requirement must be at the same skill level of your national occupation classification. So if you are a nurse, there is a requirement for you to, there's an IELTS band score that you need to get that must match your occupation. So you have to check that your NOC category matches your IELTS score. If you get a score that is lower than your NOC category, you will not be able to, you will not be qualified for this um, pilot. The educational requirement is also there. You need to evaluate your credentials. Uh, even if you have a secondary school certificate, a diploma, you just have to evaluate your credential. This is the information for the settlement fund. If you click on it, it will take you to the Government of Canada web page and scroll down. You will find information on the settlement funds, which is quite higher than the AIPP, but a little bit lower than the um, express entry. So that's the information for the settlement fund. And I've been receiving a lot of emails concerning getting settlement funds for this pilot. I'll be discussing it in a separate video about settlement funds, proof of funds, what and what you can use for your proof of funds. It will be in a separate video. But this is about the rural and northern immigration pilot. So unemployment, this is where you click for employment and job postings. And please read this information that you find here and take note of what is on the fourth paragraph. It says on January 2, 2020, we will begin accepting applications for a Thunder Bay CEDC community recommendation from individuals wishing to immigrate to Thunder Bay where they have a genuine full-time job offer from an approved employer, meet the federal government's eligibility criteria, and meet the community recommendation criteria set by the CEDC. So as from January 2nd, 2020, that's when they will start giving community recommendations. But they will start posting, um, posting positions. On the second paragraph, it says, once approved employers will be able to post positions on the website starting December 1, 2019. So as from December 1, 2019, the positions that are eligible for um, the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot will be posted on this website. So this is where you come to, to find information about the job postings. Just have to refresh this page as from December 1 to see the list of jobs that have been posted on the website. For information about the employers, you click here. This is where you find information about the employers that will be um, advertising job opportunities for the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot. Um, you can take your time to read the details on this website, but I want you to focus on this area, which is the National Occupation Classification Skill Level. This is the area that tells you the jobs that will be posted on the website as from December 1. So if your occupation is in registered nurse and registered psychiatric nurses, physiotherapists, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical and electronic engineers, just get ready as from December 1, they will start posting job opportunities in these fields. If you fall into skill level B, these are the occupations that they will be posting job opportunities for. And they are forestry technicians and technologists, airports, air pilots, flight engineers, and flying instructors, air traffic controllers and related occupations, medical technologists and technicians, pharmacy technicians, licensed practical nurses, early childhood educators and assistants, chefs, butchers and bakers, tile setters, construction mill rights and industrial mechanics, heavy duty equipment mechanics, aircraft mechanics and aircraft inspectors, underground production and development miners, logging machine operators. The next skill level is skill level C. So these are the occupations they will be posting for skill level C. Like I mentioned, the, the jobs will, will be available or the, the job postings will be available as from December 1. 
dental assistants, nurse aides, orderlies and patient service associates, residential and commercial installers and servicers, transport truck drivers, heavy equipment operators except crane, underground mine service and support workers, machine operators, mineral and metal processing, concrete clay and stone forming operators, inspectors and testers, mineral and metal processing, metal working and forging machine operators, machine tool operators, other metal product machine operators, sawmill machine operators, pulp mill machine operators, paper making and finishing machine operators, other wood processing machine operators, paper converting machine operators, lumber graders and other wood processing inspectors and graders. Basically, it's operators, people who are operating machinery they are looking for in this skill level. Now, the next and the final one that they will be posting job opportunities for are construction trade helpers and laborers. So, these are all the occupations that they will be posting as from December 1. And unfortunately, people who are accountants and human resources practitioners or supply chain I don't think they fit into Thunder Bay. So if you know you are, uh, your occupation does not fall in any of this list, any of this um, skill level listed here, there's no point applying to Thunder Bay if your occupation does not fall in any of these skills listed here. Another thing you should know is um, about the contact information. So if you want more information, you can click on this contact here and then um, you can send an email to develop at thunderbay.ca and subscribe to their newsletter and um, yeah you can just communicate with them if you want more information or if you need to know more details you can communicate with them and you'll find the information here so you can take your time to come to this website and familiarize yourself with this website and also um, december 1 like i mentioned this is where you will go to click for job postings on the employment um, section is where you click for job postings and apply for jobs thank you so much for watching i hope i have shared a useful information for you you can share this information to your friends to your loved ones and anybody that you know whose occupation falls um, in the occupations that have been listed for rural and northern immigration pilot for thunder bay share this information with them so that they can take advantage of it and start applying for job opportunities Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.